Hi, and welcome to the fourth devlog in this video series. Just a quick update before we get started. I'll be heading away this weekend to one of my country's famous wild reserves, Pilonsberg. I'll make sure to catch some of the footage of the wildlife and share it with you all in the next episode. Also, I'll be working part-time as a 3D journalist from next week, so I might not have the time to post a video every week, but I'll definitely do my best. I want to be working on my own games full-time, but unfortunately I need a stable income in order to do so. And lastly, I just want to thank everyone who's supporting this channel and for the very kind comments and feedback. This really means a lot to me and it motivates me to keep making these videos. Also, it would really help if you guys shared these devlogs around with anyone really that would be interested in watching these bad quality videos. Okay, let's get started. First, I created a particle system for the soda machine. I didn't know what I really wanted, so I just threw a bunch of random values in until it looked decent. Spoiler, it never looked decent. Next I needed to have some sort of mechanic that will indicate if the soda went inside the cup instead of the player holding the cup upside down and still being able to fill it. So I set up colliders on the particles and surprisingly Unity actually have system events when particles hit objects. This way, I can check for collisions inside the cup, and when the cup is full, the lid will pop on and it will be ready to serve. I want the cup to respawn after the previous one is full, but that turns into a horrific mess. As you can see, I totally know what I'm doing. So as of now, I could play the game, make all the meals, but I ran out of resources and I couldn't make it again in one session. That's obviously not what I wanted, so there were two options. Either I respawn all the items and have a really messy kitchen with food all over the place, or I could keep track of what supplies you have left and spawn in the difference. The messy kitchen did sound cool, but it was really hard trying to get anything done with a dozen supplies on the table. For this I had to customize the playmaker action that created objects. What I did was, whenever an object was instantiated, I had a value that wasn't null. And if you used that object and it was later destroyed, it would change into a null value because the object didn't exist anymore. I could then use a bool value on the action and check if the object exists, and if it didn't, I created it again. This meant I had to create a bool value for each object that would spawn in. But I think this way is better because it doesn't look so messy and there's more strategy to resupplying since there will be a cooldown. Next I created fire particles that would appear when you leave something on the stove for a while. Why do you need fire, you might ask? Well, there's a fire extinguisher, so yeah, and of course every cooking game needs fire. I do the same here as I did with the soda cups, with particle collisions. When the fire is burning, you need to keep extinguishing it until the fire is out, otherwise it will just grow again. Smother the flame instantly! I also made it so that it destroys all the meat inside as well as the new meat you throw on the pan. So as of now I can build a meal but once you make a mistake you have to build a new one or just serve the wrong order. So I added the ability to throw food onto the board and if it hits hard enough it will break into its individual components again. After adding the top bun or the sauce for the hot dog only then you aren't able to change it anymore and have to serve it or make a new meal. Next it was time to start adding some chopping and cutting effects to the food. I added little particles that would spawn at the position where you hit the food and fly away from that point. I also added a few sounds when you hit them and when they are broken into pieces. I then went on to make sizzling effects for the meat on the pan. This was a little more tricky since they changed colors as they cook, so I had to change the particle colors as well for all the food states. After that I added a floor manager to all the objects. If any food item gets dropped onto the floor, it gets destroyed, and if a tool or item gets dropped, it will pop back up where it initially spawned at. This way you need to be careful where you place food and rather not throw them around. Alright, so right now, you can cook food, make more food, burn the food, drop the food, not yet eat the food. What's missing is doing all this with someone. After all, this is going to be a multiplayer game. 
So I researched different networking solutions, and there are a few free ones like Unity's built-in networking, which will be replaced in the future. There is also Mirror, which was made to replace Unity's old networking system. But for me, I had already worked with Photon, and Playmaker has actions that just work out of the box. I knew I was also going to add voice chat for when players use the telephones so that they can talk or irritate the other player. Where's the lamb sauce? Come on, man. Luckily, Photon has a voice chat plugin as well. Photon is almost a plug and play add on. You just have to add a game ID and set it up in the project, and you're good to go. After I set up my project with Photon, I needed to have the players join the session and have the references assigned in my scene. Making a basic multiplayer game is quite simple. When you join a room, you instantiate a player and it gets assigned to the client who created it, so that the other players can't control your character. I got started pretty quickly and I had a basic multiplayer experience. Players can connect and spawn as either player 1 or player 2, and the positions and rotations of the chef and the chef's arms get synced over the network. I really can't wait to have it all working and have the first match or race or whatever you would call it. Who knows, maybe it will be ready by next week. And so we are at the end of this week's devlog and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like if you did or a dislike if you didn't. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.